Hi, here is the next video for my AP Calculus AB exam review. Things to watch out for, things to be careful, things to think about before you take the AP test. All right, number 16. Don't forget to include endpoints with your relative extrema when finding absolute extrema. So if I'm finding absolute extrema, I want to make sure I include endpoints and relative extrema. People tend to forget to, to include both. Um, so make sure, and then make sure you know how to find relative extrema. Remember, it's where the first derivative equals zero or does not exist. And then you want to make sure at those points that the derivative changes from positive negative or negative positive. And by the first derivative test, it will tell you if it's a relative max or relative min. So you want to check the first derivative test and then you want to track the endpoints, but they're very common. Absolute extrema are very important to the AP test. All right, remember extremas and points of inflections are where the sign changes. Same with this problem. Extremas and points of inflections are where the sign changes. A lot of times people know that point of inflection, oh yeah, point of inflection is where the second derivative equals zero or does not exist, but then they forget that the signs must change for this two. Now, the, how the signs change tell you if it's a max or min. That's called the first derivative test. But for points of inflection, it doesn't care how they change. For extremas, it does. Remember, for a max, it should go from positive slopes to negative slopes. For a minimum, see right here, it goes from negative slopes to positive slopes. Okay. Anyways. All right. You must understand all the small details of every major s concept. And here's a small detail that's very, very common throughout. Differentiability implies continuity. When I say something is differentiable, it means it's continuous. But continu new continuity means if it's continuous, it doesn't mean it's differentiable. An example that for this is that right there is continuous, but it's not differentiable right there. But if it's differentiable, then it's always continuous. So this is an important statement, and there's many little statements that are very important to pay attention to. All right, pay attention to the units of measure. I love units of measure, especially on the free response questions, because they give away a ton. You can tell if it's an initial function, it's derivative, or it's an integral. Uh, many things you can tell. For instance, if it says meters per second, what that means is it's a derivative. It's a rate. It's meters over time. If it just says gallons, Oh, I know that's a initial function. I call it a position function. Okay. If you see um, uh, meters per second squared, you go, oh, that means second derivative. So pay attention to the unit. Make sure you include them when needed. But the units give away what type of function it is. So we pay very close attention to that. Um, number 20, when finding the average value, the units of measure stay the same. So this is how you find the average value. Just be careful, if you're doing an average value of a rate, say it's a rate function like miles per hour, the answer of this would be miles per hour. But if you're finding an average value of, say, um, meters, the answer stays in meters. A lot of people mess up. And the reason for that is when you're integrating this, say this is meters per second, this function. When I integrate it, I go down to meters. But then this right here is time. So it comes meters per second. So it comes back to meters per second. So just remember also that an integral is going from meters per second per se back to meters. And a derivative goes from meters to meters per second. Anyways, the units give away a lot. And maybe I haven't missed you up with the units of measures here, but just remember the unit of measure stays the same when you average value. Um, it's pretty important to keep track of that, and a lot of people mess up. Next, whenever you see the word rate of change, think derivative. The rate of change, derivative, every time. Just like, remember the word increasing, decreasing? Increasing, decreasing okay, told you a whole bunch of stuff. Okay, so just like increasing, decreasing tells you some important information, so does if you see rate of change, that means derivative. Increasing, decreasing means derivative, but they tell you positive or negative. Rate of change means derivative as well. So just watch the word and make sure if it says rate of change of something, make sure you're careful of what it's a rate of change of. So be careful. So if it's saying rate of change of gallons, that means. Oh, gallons per maybe hour. So just be careful. Anyways, 22. There will sometimes be data given that you do not even need to solve the problem. 
very common multiple choice problems, is they give you too much data. And so you think, i got to use everything, i got to use everything. No, you don't. Be careful not to try to use everything. Sometimes it's not all necessary. Um, 23, remember composite functions. This is called a composite function. For instance, if this is my function, sometimes it'll say f of sine x. And you might go, oh, what'd that mean? Oh, no. It just simply means that x, this is x, is going to replace the sine x. So anytime you see an x, you replace it with sine x. So don't freak out when you see this. Composite functions, there's different ways they'll use them, but make sure you know your composite functions and how to plug a function into a function. Number 24, when you find an equation of a tangent line, remember, of a function, you need the coordinate x, y. Remember, f of x is really y. It's the same thing. And I need the derivative. I need the slope. This is the m. Okay. Remember the equation y minus y1. y1 equals m times x minus x. Sorry, that's not a, it looks like weird. x1. That is the formula. And then you simply plug in x, y, and your m. Once you have all that, you have the equation of the tangent line. Sometimes they just give you x, and you have to find f of x by plugging it into the function. But you have to find the slope. You have to know what, what, what point, and you have to find the output, the y value. Next, with implicit differentiation, do not forget the chain rule. Okay, implicit. A lot of times we forget to do the chain rule. What I mean by that is every time you take the derivative of something with y, do not forget a y prime. For instance, if I have this, if I'm deriving that, you have to remember this is a product rule. So I derive that, that's 1. I leave y plus leave x and derive y. When you derive y, you have to put y prime. You actually have to put that. The derivative of that is 0. Now, I didn't use a chain rule here. I, I did, really, because the derivative of y is actually 1 times y prime. Basically, all said is make sure whenever you derive y, there should be a y prime at the end using chain rule. People a lot of times forget the y prime. Be very careful. Next, 26, when you read with respect to time, when you see this phrase, with respect to time, think related rates. And related rates are always like a function you're driving it in respect to time. So say my function is um, volume, uh, uh, let's say area is equal to pi r squared. Okay, if that's the, the function, area is pi r squared. Now, um, if I'm going to do the related rates, what I'm doing is I'm taking the derivative in respects to time, and this would be, oh, 2 pi r times dr dt. It's called a related rates. And then a related rates is a derivative in respects to time. And what happens is that usually in this problem, is they give you all these pieces, and you're basically are like solving for dr dt, the rate of r over time, or they might ask for the area change over time, and they'll give you everything else. So that's the idea of related rates. Related rates come when you hear the word with respect to time. So just keep that in mind. They usually people freak out because they're word problems, but don't try to freak, try not to freak out, and just look for the information, derive it in respects to time. And they usually start off with like a function like this. A lot of times they do it with area or volume problems. Um, that, next, the absolute extrema. Um, I use, my book doesn't talk global, but absolute extrema means global extrema. If you hear the word relative, it means local. That may mean nothing to you, but for my textbook, we don't use um, local uh, and global. So just make sure you know those um, comparisons. And the last two. I'm going to use the last two. In order to, to best fit your graphs on your calculators, first adjust the domain in your windows. you got to go to your window on your graphing calculator, adjust the domain, the x values, and then press the zoom fit. Zoom fit will stretch your graph to fit perfectly, and it's very important to do that. It's really nice to help you. Lastly, slope fields are easy, so don't forget to review them. It's, it's, they're pretty simple. You're just going to make um, little dashes according to plugging in coordinates. Just make sure you review them, and, and it'll probably be on the, on the test, and it's a pretty easy question. Um, I hope all this review helped, and good luck on your AP tests.